We have one more thing um, to be able to do together before we take our break. And this is very special to me. Um, and in your information pack packets, um, you have two handouts. And one is called Practice, Practice, Practice by Paul Linden. And the other is called Embodied Peacemaking, Four Quick and Easy Exercises. So I said that this conference, this gathering, is something a little bit different. And uh, Paul is probably a little bit different of an individual to invite to this gathering. He doesn't do research. He doesn't work in collaborative research or indigenous research ethics. Um, what he does do is a number of other things. He is a uh, practitioner of a martial art called Aikido, uh, which I happen to be a practitioner of. You might kind of see some threads and connections and maybe make a connection to why he's here. Um, but Paul has been practicing this martial art. It's referred to as the art of peace in Aikido, unlike other martial arts. The, um, the idea and the, and the philosophy and the techniques are about um, meeting and connecting with your attacker and merging and um, enabling your attacker and yourself to be guided to a physically safe uh, way of, of exiting your encounter. So if uh, I was to be attacked, if I was higher rank than I am, I'm only a third level white belt, which is two and a half years in. Paul is a sixth Dan, a sixth Dan, sixth degree black belt. He's been practicing for 46 years. So if I attacked Paul, he would be able to, um, no matter how hard or how quickly I attacked him, he'd be able to guide me to a safe place so that I was not harmed and he was not harmed. And he uses physics and he uses all sorts of other kinds of things to do that in his years of 46 years of practicing. Of, of, of practicing. Um, the reason that I asked Paul to come is not only because he practices the keto, but because he, he has a PhD in physical education and he has studied the physiology and the physicality of um, what he calls embodied peacemaking. And as I began my journey in Aikido um, as a new martial artist, I started immediately on, on the mats in the dojo where we practice, I started immediately finding connections between this concept of ethical space that Willie Ermine has offered up to the Endeavor of Research Ethics and we'll speak about today. And I found myself physically experiencing something that I was conceptually um, trying to understand. And so um, when I discovered Paul's work a couple of years ago um, on the internet, and we've only met in person for the first time since he came, um, I thought, wouldn't that be could that that was helpful to me to experience that physically. I wonder if it would be helpful to others. And so Paul's work is around what he calls embodied peacemaking, and it is around, I would say, body awareness, self-awareness, having more understanding of our own physiology and what happens when we are in conflict, and how we can do some things to help ourselves um, physiologically be at peace, which can help us in many other ways. So we have just a few minutes, a little bit shorter than we had envisioned. So I want to invite Paul up to introduce you, and um, he may be able to do a very short um, exercise, and then he's going to uh, not only appear on the program later on, but he's going to be doing a breakout session where uh, we'll have a room with no chairs um, later this afternoon, and you can learn more about Paul and his ways if, you, if you're intrigued with this method. So I'd just like to um, pass it over. May I also say, um, Paul has this um, wonderful practice, 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 which I, I would read if I didn't, if I had my glasses, but I can't see it. But how he describes himself is that he's been practicing Aikido for 43. Okay, it's 46. <laughs> uh, sorry, 46. I've been practicing Aikido for 46 years, and I've been practicing Parkinson's disease for 10. And a, and a remarkable thing about Paul is, the, is some of the work that he's been doing is applying his techniques to his own um, experience with Parkinson's. And I've watched um, videos, Paul has a number of videos where he's sharing his work with others. And I've watched him in a video as the tremors increase and, and when, he's, um, uh, when he's fatigued or, or nervous, the tremors will increase. He applies his own methods to himself and I've seen him stop his own tremors. So he's actually developing his methods for people with Parkinson's disease to, to uh, see where that goes. So I'm gonna turn it over to Paul and um, you get a little appetizer of what he does, and then I really invite you to, to come and join him in, in the breakout. 
When I was first diagnosed, they didn't tell me that Parkinson's is, is an amplification circuit. If I'm enjoying myself, I shake my belief. And I must be having a lot of fun. <laughs> what I've tried to do is to extract the core of Aikido. And I can literally now teach in 60 seconds things that took me 20 years to, to learn. And that's a good time saving. <laughs> Basically, what I'm working with is the distress response. Kelly, get me, please. Anywhere. Fight, flight, freeze, or collapse. And what that does is it alienates us from the attacker, alienates us from ourselves. When Kelly hits me, I stop feeling her as a human. I stop feeling myself as a human. Hit me. Thank you. If I can remember it to be in my heart, in my breath, in my grounding, in my space around, um, do something else. Thank you. I can, I can protect her and me both. And what that means is, when you run into a challenge, first look at your body. What are you doing? Do you, let's try something. Without, uh, no, one, no one has to do this. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But if, you, if you're willing to, turn and put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Okay. Notice what you feel. Notice what you're doing with your breath. Notice how you're sharing the space. Now, don't do this, but think, I'm going to hurt this person if I touch them. What happens in your body? What happens in the person's body who's being touched? Do you feel the shrinking, the coming away from the connection? How can you radiate outward, soften your tongue, soften your belly, soften your breathing, and touch gently? Now, as the person being touched without permission, as the, the victim, so to speak, can you put yourself in a place where you're comfortable and make them comfortable as well? I've got to do one thing. Would you grab me, please? What, what what happens when you when you hold this hold strong? You feel me grab you. What did you what did you just do? And tense. Here for a second, please. You don't have to do this. There's a line on the floor. Don't let me pull you across the line. What are you doing and why? Why bother? It's totally across the line. Right. Thank you. Smart. It's a reframe. I didn't say, did I say not to cross the line? No, I said don't let me pull you across the line. And if you cooperate with the unacceptable, you can find ways to work with it. That are positive. How does, how does that sound? How does that feel to you? May I hit you, please? <laughs> Notice what direction she's going. We pull away. To rush in, we're fools and angels both here to tread. Move toward the problem and breathe and ground and breath. Hold strong. If I feel if I feel kindness, if I feel kindness, it softens her. If I feel antagonism, everybody responds by bracing. And the, the worse I feel about the attacker, the harder it is to defend myself. The more loving and kind I feel, the easier I can work to protect her against harm, as well as me. I think that's enough. It wasn't even 12 minutes, was it? <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you for that.